<clears throat> Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top, beautiful, postcard-perfect summer day here in the Catskill Mountains. A fine day to be alive on a collapsing planet here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. I, we have made it to this beautiful Wednesday morning, June 26, 2019, and the little dog and I need to get out there and my gas sucking truck and go on some adventure while we still have gas in our gas sucking truck while we still can and before I go I want to uh, figure out today's chronicle of the collapse to look at just one of the myriad ways that things as the fly apart begins in earnest how things uh, are going to be playing out uh, as we head into Mad Max territory. Before I dive into that, I do want to send out a big thank you to kind-hearted tribes member Jared Ackert for his donation to my Collapse Chronicles PayPal account. And uh, I notice donations are been slacking off here, to put it mildly. Uh, and I really appreciate anybody who has ever found it in their hearts and wallets to support the work that I do here on uh, Collapse Chronicles. I, I really appreciate it. Yes, I know you're not going to jump off this deck. You want to go get a chippy or what? Okay. All right. But that pleasant task out of the way. Once again, I want to thank my uh, alert listener and lieutenant Aaron from Florida for sending me this story from The Guardian. Uh, it's actually The Guardian just printing the Reuters news version of the same story, I believe. And this is actually in the mainstream media today. A, a no-brainer uh, chronicle of the collapse, how things. So just right here in Reuters news in the mainstream media, <clears throat> reprinted by The Guardian. Uh, this was somewhere in the news feed uh, but right next to some story about uh, Britney Spears new Instagram of her rolling around in the sand in her new bikini but after you finish reading about uh, that you can move on to this story about climate apartheid UN experts UN expert says human rights may not survive. Yes, human rights. We can certainly watch them fly out the window. Speaking of flying out the window, Sancho, there's a pop right here. I don't think Sancho is going to jump off a second story deck. You might hear that chippy out there. Anyway, right to life is likely to be undermined alongside the rule of law. Uh, this, this whole term, rule of law, I have to admit, guys, I am unclear exactly what the definition of rule of law is. Okay, but we are going to uh, see what the definition of the rule of law is here in 2019. What is left of this? Rule of law <clears throat> is the restriction of the arbitrary exercise of power by subordinating it to well-defined and established laws. Well, that really clears it up for me what the rule of law is. Okay. Let's try, what do you mean by rule of law? 
rule of law takes on several meanings. On one hand, it means that no person or government is above the law. In another, it means that no government or its officials can enforce laws that are unfair or unjust. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. There, there certainly is a whole lot left of at least that second meaning. And all you have to do is go to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue or the Presidential Palace down there in Brazil to uh, get a sick laugh of the first meaning that no person or government is above the law. Yes, I love this. The rule of law will be undermined, like, like in the future. Anyway, let's get back to what I came here to talk about, and that is this chronicle of the collapse, climate apartheid. A newest, the newest term for the, the glossary of the collapse, climate apartheid. <clears throat> the world is increasingly at risk of, quote, climate apartheid, where the rich pay to escape heat and hunger caused by the, ex the escalating climate crisis while the rest of the world suffers, a report from a UN human rights expert has said. This is Philip Alston. We need to get Philip here on the show. Philip Alston, UN special rapporteur, I love that word, rapporteur, on extreme poverty and human rights said the impacts of global heating are likely to undermine not only basic rights to life, water, food, and housing for hundreds of millions of people, but also democracy and the rule of law. Yes, Alston is critical critical of what he calls the, quote, patently inadequate, patently inadequate steps taken by the UN itself, countries, you know, countries in the UN, NGOs and businesses saying they are, quote, entirely disproportionate to the urgency and magnitude of the threat, close quote. His report to the UN Human Rights Council concludes, quote, human rights may not survive the coming upheaval. Yes, do you think so? Human rights may not survive the coming upheaval. If you want to see a picture of the coming upheaval, there's, you know, what one of the biggest stories on the planet today is that uh, that Central American uh, climate refugee and his two-year-old daughter drowning in the Rio Grande River yesterday while this man and was trying to swim across the Rio Grande with his two-year-old daughter clinging for life to him. They were swept away. And uh, anybody who does not understand what this man is talking about, I would advise going and looking at those photos. Where were we? Oh, yes. Let's get to Donald Trump. How does Donald Trump figure into all this? <clears throat> The report also condemns President Donald Trump for, quote, actively silencing, actively silencing climate science and criticizes the Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro, 
for promising to open up the Amazon rainforest to mining, but Alston said there were also some positive developments. We gotta have some hopium. So what are the positive developments to offset the negative ones? How about legal cases against states and fossil fuel companies? Hmm, don't forget the activism of Greta Thunberg and the worldwide school strikes and of course Extinction Rebellion. And I, I got the idea even from, uh, from a couple of other Doomers, although they didn't mention me personally, they were talking about Doomers like me. And, and once again, for any other Doomer down here in, in the Doomosphere misunderstanding me, I 100% support the activism of Greta Thunberg and Extinction Rebellion, okay? I am one, you go girl, you go Extinction Rebellion. I 100% support all of that stuff as long as Greta and Extinction uh, Rebellion are doing it in the spirit of just not letting the planet eaters take us down like a bunch of dead cockroaches with our legs sticking up in the air. As much as I'm cheering on Greta and Extinction Rebellion and, and all the rest uh, of those folks, uh, there is no chance that, uh, that Greta Thunberg or Extinction Rebellion is going to do one thing at this point. Uh, to stop climate apartheid in its tracks, and I need to get back on track here. All right. <clears throat> in May, <coughs> Alston's report on poverty in the UK compared conservative party welfare policies to the creation of 19th century workhouses. Ministers said his report gave a completely inaccurate picture, but Alston accused them of, quote, total denial of a set of uncontested facts. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> Alston's new report on climate change and poverty will be formally presented to the Human Rights Commission in Geneva on Friday, <clears throat> it said the greatest impact of the climate crisis would be on those living in poverty. Imagine that, <clears throat> with many losing access to adequate food and water. Wow, I wonder what this is going to look like. Quote, <clears throat> Climate change threatens to undo the last 50 years of progress in development, global health, and poverty reduction, close quote, Alston said. Developing countries will bear an estimated 75% of the cost of the climate crisis despite the poorest half of the world's population, causing just 10% of all carbon dioxide emissions. Quote, Yet democracy and the rule of law, as well as a wide range of civil and political rights, are every bit at risk. The risk of community discontent. There you go. Community discontent of growing inequality and of even greater levels of deprivation among some groups will likely stimulate nationalist, xenophobic, <coughs> racist, and other responses. Can you say Donald Trump and Jair Bolsonaro. Maintaining a balanced approach to civil and political rights will be 
extremely complex, close quote. Yes, extremely complex. <clears throat> the impacts of the climate crisis could increase divisiveness, Alston said. Quote, we risk a climate apartheid scenario where the wealthy pay to escape overheating, hunger, and conflict while the rest of the world is left to suffer. When Hurricane Sandy wreaked havoc on New York in 2012, stranding low-income and vulnerable New Yorkers without access to power and health care, the Goldman Sachs headquarters was protected by tens of thousands of its own sandbags and power from its generators, close quote. Yes, Alston strongly criticizes all those working to uphold human rights, including his own previous work, for not making the climate crisis a central issue of, you know, basically the social justice warrior movement. He said the most recent Human Rights Commission resolutions on the climate did not recognize, quote, that the enjoyment of all human rights by vast numbers of people is gravely threatened, or the need for the deep social and economic transfer transformation, which almost all observers agree is urgent if climate catastrophe is to be averted, close quote. Back to Reuters or The Guardian, as the case may be. International climate treaties have been ineffective, the report said, with even the 2015 Paris Accord still leaving the world on course for a catastrophic 3 degree C, otherwise known as 5.4 degree Fahrenheit, of heating without further action. Back to Alston's report, quote, states have marched past every scientific warning and threshold and what was once considered catastrophic warning, warming now seems like a best case scenario, close quote. Yes, it does. The U.S. president is one of the few individuals named in his report, quote, he, meaning Donald Trump, has placed former lobbyists in oversight roles, adopted industry talking points, presided over an aggressive rollback of environmental regulations, and is actively silencing and obfuscating climate science." Close quote. However, the required changes to societies and economies could be an opportunity to improve people's lives. Quoting Alston, the crisis should be a catalyst for states to fulfill long ignored economic and social rights, including to social security and access to food, health care, shelter, and decent work, close quote. <clears throat> and we're going to move here at the very end uh, to hear from <clears throat> Ashfaq Kaflan from Amnesty International chiming in, all of, in on all of this, <clears throat> quote, Climate change is a human rights issue precisely because of the impact it is having on people. Hmm. The primary obligation to protect people from human rights harms 
lies with states, well, meaning countries. A state, a country that fails to take any feasible steps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is violating their human rights obligations. <clears throat> Kafan said Amnesty International planned to target governments and fossil fuel companies, quote, we need everybody to live up to their responsibilities and to act on climate change and protect human rights, he said. There you go, we shall see. But anybody uh, who does not understand how <clears throat> human rights and the already laughable notion of the rule of law are going to go up in smoke uh, on what's coming down the pike, but as long as I can exercise my human right to get in my gas-sucking car and head out into this gorgeous day on this planet in the summer of 2019, enjoying beautiful summer day while I still can, you better, you better believe that I am going to exercise my human right to do just that while I still can. And I strongly recommend you exercise your human right to get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, the, the wind chimes over the traffic noise. Am I the only one who understands how hilarious this is. Bye guys.